Hi, this is Aaron at thinkaboutlabs.com and welcome back. In this series, we'll be having a look at setting up a multi-purpose message log where you'll be able to write any information to. Information such as a chat box, status of player moves, dialogues, etc. At the time of this video, I'm using Unity 3D version 2017.3.0 F3. Before writing any code, we need to create a message window where our messages will show up at. So in the hierarchy, let's right click, go to UI, and add a scroll view. Doing so automatically gives us canvas and an event system. So scroll view is highlighted. Let's go ahead and reset its transform. Let's position it in the bottom left hand corner by hitting the anchor presets. Hold down shift, alt, and hit the bottom left right here. Okay, let's go ahead and give it some padding on the left by five and on the bottom by five as well. Let's set its width to 200 and its height to 300. It's pretty good. I'm not going to use the horizontal scroller at all, so let's go ahead and disable that. And in the scroll view, let's delete the horizontal scroll bar. We won't be using it at all. Okay, let's expand the viewport and go to the content. In the content, we need to add a component. And that component is going to be a content size filter. We're going to set the vertical fit to be preferred size. We're also going to add a vertical layout group. And we're going to give the elements within the content some padding. So that's going to be 5 by 5 by 5 by 5. Just a nice little padding all around it. We're going to leave the child alignment to the upper left. And we're going to enable the control size for the width and height. But we're going to disable the height on the child force expand. Okay, on the content, let's right click and go to UI and add a panel. For this panel, we need to add a layout element and change the preferred or the minimum height. We're going to set this to 40. This is going to be our actual message box right here. You can see we already have some padding all the way around it and that is coming from the contents vertical layout group. Back to the panel. Let's right click and add a UI text. This is going to be our text. Let's give it some sam sample text. Okay. Let's go ahead and align by the geometry. We're not going to be using the rich text at all. And let's set it to best fit with the maximum size of 17. Okay. All right, so that looks good. Let's rename a couple things. So the text is going to be info text. And the panel, let's rename this to message. All right, so that's all set up. So let's go ahead and create a new folder in our assets called prefabs. Prefabs. And let's go ahead and drag the message into the prefabs. And we're going to delete this message. So as a demonstration real quick, if we grab the prefab and put it inside of the content, and then add another one in here, I'm just duplicate these you can see our messages are going to just display in here just like that perfect that's what we're looking for let's go ahead and delete all these so now we need a method to spawn these messages for us and fill out the text so back in assets let's create a new folder called scripts all right let's create a new script create c sharp script and let's call this messenger Let's add this messenger to a new empty game object. Let's name this object uh, game manager. Let's go ahead and reset its transform. Let's drag the messenger on it and let's open the messenger up. All right, let's go ahead and format this code. Control A K F. And we're going to delete the update and start functions. So with the messenger, uh, class, we're going to set this up as a singleton so that it is globally um, available to any class or game object in our entire project. So do that by setting a private static messenger instance. Then set up the singleton as a public static messenger instance. 
capitalize this instance and get here we're going to say that if our instance is equal to null then our instance is going to be equal to find object of type messenger and then simply return the instance all right so our singleton setup we need a few things for our messenger class we need a public game object message prefab this is the prefab that we just created so what we're going to do here is we're going to instantiate new messages based off this message prefab well when instantiating UI elements they have to be placed inside the canvas by default when you instantiate a game object it just throws it in the scene so we need a public rec transform message parent here we're going to assign our scroll view content to be the parent of our message prefabs one will be inside of the canvas and two it's going to be inside that scroll view content area okay let's, so now let's create a method to create our messages so public void create message let's pass it in two parameters pass it in a string my message and a color for the text Okay, let's scroll it down a little bit. So first we need to instantiate the game object. Let's call this object CM for create message equals instantiate. We're going to be instantiating the message prefab at the message prefab dot transform dot position with its quaterion dot identity. Once we've instantiated that new game object, we need to set its transform to the cm.transform.setParent to be the message parent. So again, so that is in the canvas and it is in the content of the scroll view. Then we're going to set the scale appropriately to sometimes when you instantiate UI elements, their local scale and their world scale. Um, get mixed up. So cm dot get component c cm dot get component rect transform local scale. We're going to set this to a new vector three of one. Okay, and then let's set the prefabs text. Our text is a child of the message. To access that, we're going to do cm.transform.getChild. And we're going to get that at the index of zero because it's the first one at that index. Get component text. Here, let's go ahead and add the Unity Engine UI. Dot text is equal to my message. And for the message color, cm.transform.getChild at the index of zero, get component, get component, text, text, dot color is equal to message color. Okay, good. So that is it for the messenger class. So now that the messenger class is set up as a singleton and we have a method to create these messages, let's go back and add another script called game manager. And let's add this game manager to our game manager object. Now you'll also see that the messenger is asking for the message prefab and the message parent. So let's go to the prefabs and grab the message. 
and this is our prefab, and our message parent is going to be our content. Next, let's go ahead and add a button here. We're going to do this to simulate creating messages. So we'll set the, the width at 200 and the height at 200. Just one big box. Let's go ahead and move this down to the bottom. Let's go to that text and let's set this to um, spawn message. Set this to best fit. Get some padding on the bottom. Oops. On the button. Let's give some position on the bottom. Perfect. All right. So on the game manager, we added a game manager script. So let's go ahead and edit the script. Let's format this. Control A K F. All right, let's go ahead and delete all this out of here. One of the data structures that I like to use to handle large amounts of messages is a queue. So let's create a queue of strings, so public queue. And this queue is going to be filled full of strings. And the queue is going to be called message queue. All right, so in start, Let's initialize the message queue to be equal to a new queue of strings. All right, now that we've initialized the message queue, let's go ahead and add a string to this message queue. So message queue dot in queue. And what we're going to add is the queue is awake. Perfect. Now to read messages out of this queue, let's go ahead and create a new function called uh, check new messages. So void check new messages. Here we'll say so if the message queue dot count dot count is greater than zero for each string line in message queue. We're going to read each string in the uh, message queue. Now as we're reading all the strings in the message queue, we're going to create a new message from the messenger class. So since again, since it's a singleton, we can do that by messenger dot instance dot create message. And the message that we're going to pass in is the line and let's set its color to black. Perfect. So after we've read the message out of the message queue, we need to dequeue it or get it out of the queue. We're no longer using it. So the message queue dot dequeue. And let's just set this in the update function for now. Check new messages. So on every frame, we're checking for a new message. That works out well. So now let's hook up the button for, to spawn a message. So um, public void um, create message. And that's just the demonstration of creating a message. So um, message queue dot in queue. I've created a message. So we're going to pass in this string into the queue. The queue is going to loop through and create new messages. And these messages are going to be checked on every single update. So let's hook up this uh, create message to the button. And let this compile for a second. And on the button, let's change the one click to be the game manager because this is where our game manager script lives. And on the function, let's go to game manager and create message. All right, so let's go ahead and play this. No error messages. We have one message in here. It says the queue is awake. And that was our first message that we sent in, into the queue. We did that on start. 
and we click the button I created a message perfect we can scroll through the messages awesome well I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this tutorial up and we'll see you in the next one till then